Well, Nick, um, congratulations. How pleased were you with what was a, a professional performance? Uh, yeah, really pleased. I said to the players early on in the week to try not put too much focus on, the, on it. I, I said it early that I thought the first goal would be really important because we knew they were a really strong team and although they didn't really create much against us in the, over the two legs, they pressed really well and, and, and they tried to force mistakes which could potentially, if we didn't have a high focus, create chances for them. So, um, yeah, when we scored the first goal and then settled down, it, it really gave us control of the game. I think it's the first time in four years that two sides have made the last 16. Chelsea are already there as well. What does that say about the strength of the WSL? Yeah, I, you know, I, I've heard a lot since I've been in the job about how the English league isn't maybe uh, at the level that other leagues are in, on, in Europe and maybe, you know, in the world. And I've always found the league really competitive and, and I've always found every game really tough. Um, so I said after the Euros, after the after the, the semi-finals and the finals about it, you know England and, and the Dutch team having so many players based here and and I think the Champions League has proven with us both getting through and, and you know I think that result for, for Chelsea is an exceptional result and, and I watched the game was a, an exceptional performance and yeah our, our league is is growing from strength to strength and I really believe that it is really competitive now. Pauline was watching I think from this side of the ground um, what's the prognosis on her and and, and how important was tonight's result in, in kind of putting that to one side and the, and the girls doing it for her perhaps? Yeah, I think the staff wanted the players to focus on being being logical and, and sticking to, to what we spoke about and playing the game and, and, and not playing on emotion because I know the players really wanted to, you know, put put a performance in and get a result for Pauline because, you know, she hasn't been here that long but she's really integrated into the team and, and she's become not only a teammate but real great friends of, of all of the players. So we were really keen for her to get across. She's staying here at CFA, so we were really keen for her to get across and watch the game and yeah. I mean, I don't know how long a rehab will be in a recovery because ultimately it's still really early, but she's had the surgery, she's gone through phase one and, and she's got a smile on her face, so we're really happy at the moment. So last one from me, um, 18 goals in five games. You talked about being on the front foot and scoring and entertaining more and you've got a set-piece throwing now as well. Yeah, I think uh, we scored a few goals from the throwing. I think it's, it's one thing, you know, we want to be a footballing team and, and we definitely want to get the ball down and excite the crowd, but you know, I'm a massive believer in... In, in finding ways to win and we've got some real set piece deliveries we've got a throw in we can score from direct we can score when the ball's on the grass so yeah we've got different ways of scoring I pushed the team this year to score more goals and you know we've scored more than we did in 2016 but the flip side is we've also conceded more than we did in 2016 because at this point we haven't conceded a goal so we want to be defensively solid but we want to be you know on the front foot and exciting in attack but the only fact that matters to me is that we, we've won every game that we've played and and I wanted maximum points and I wanted to be in the hat for the next round of the Champions League with this international break coming and the players have delivered so you know I couldn't ask for any more. You, you sat with Izzy Christensen quite deep almost next to Kira Walsh at times. Was that experimenting for future or was that for just for tonight's game were you more worried about not conceding than, than winning the game? No that wasn't me to be honest that was Izzy. Um, I think when you play up against... One thing I've said is we've had a real structure in the way that we, we play and most teams have sat deep and tried to condense their half of the pitch. And, and I think when you come up against a team that, that tries to condense your half of the pitch and tries to press you, you do have to, the players do have to solve the problem. And although we knew the way that, that Poulton were going to press and we knew the areas that we could exploit on that press, I think I've encouraged the players to try and solve the problem and be responsible and, and almost show their quality and... Izzy's done that at the start of this year. She's been exceptional, and and tonight again, you know, she's dropping into deeper areas to find the ball to to make more numbers so that we can play through the press. And you know, I, when I watch it back, I will probably see what you saw because I'm almost looking at the defensive structure when we're playing out against the press. But yeah, she's been good this year, very good. Uh, I'm um, really impressive tonight. Um, have you sort of told her to go make the shirt her own? A right back. Um, I think we've gave her the opportunity to make the shirt her own. I think with Abby, I think she's been a bit disappointed in her performances over over the last maybe you know two games. Started well, and I think tonight she wanted to make a statement to herself really. And, and I could tell this week that she wanted to put a big performance in. And, and I thought she was our best player today. I think defensively and and with the ball, I thought she was exceptional tonight. And Abby just is, she's a young player, and, and people know that we want to improve young players here. And, I think Abby's gone from strength to strength in the three years she's been here. And if she has more performances like that and she puts in the work like she has this week, then she can achieve things in the game. 
it was the week before the Notts County game last season when Tony Le- Leighton wrote that article about her being picked for the England side. Is that something that you think she'll, she can look at? Look at oh, I can't speak. She can push towards again? Yeah, I think, you know, I think all of our young English players here, we, we want to give them the opportunity to become senior internationals. And, 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 and when that comes, that's for the person that picks the team. But, you know, we just want them to, to, be, to be better than they are now and keep pushing them and with the ball be able to play the style of football we want to play. And without the ball, especially our defensive players, restrict the opposition from creating chances. And, and tonight, like I say, if Abby can replicate them performances, she will become a very, very good player and she'll give herself the opportunity to be picked. Um, Karen Bardsley, how far off is she from pushing for starting position? And number two, Ellie Roebuck, pretty faultless performance tonight. So does that pose a problem for you? KB is in that last phase of recovery. So uh, she's, she's, I mean, if you've seen tonight, she did the warm-up tonight and she's, she's in, she's, she's load compromises. She's training some, some days and some days we're, we're resting her. Uh, we're being a bit conservative with her to just make sure she's back for after the international break. Ellie Roebuck, you know, I'm a massive believer in giving people opportunity. And, and I said to Ellie three, three weeks ago that sometimes opportunity just lands when you don't expect it. And some people take it and some people don't. And I just try and encourage them to almost play with no fear. My expectation of Ellie as a young goalkeeper is go and do your best. I don't expect her to, to replicate the levels of KB. But well, having saying that, I think she's been faultless with the ball at her feet. I think she's really shown that that style of goalkeeper that, that, that we want and she wants to be, she's, she's really heading towards being somebody that we see as our future number one, of course. Hey, Nick. What's your approach to the draw? Is it a case that you don't care who you play next, you, you fear no one, or is it a case that you want to play teams that are nearby or teams that you may be deemed that aren't too difficult? Do you have an opinion on who you want to play next? Not really, no. I, I've never, because it's our, only our second season, I don't think we're in the, in the position of, of trying, to, trying to guess who we're going to get or trying to say we'd rather have this. It, it's a random draw, and I think that's the beauty of this Champions League compared to the men's, is that it's, it's a knockout competition. It's a, I say it's random, we're seeded. So we can only get the unseeded pot, but it's random who we'll draw. And whoever we draw, we're going to have to put in a performance and make sure we prepare for that game because there are no, there are no weak teams in this con- especially when you get through to the last 16. And then if you're lucky enough to get into the last eight, the standard of opposition is, is very, very tough. So we just need to keep trying to improve and make sure that whoever we play, we can make sure that we give ourselves the best chance of winning.